the Anasazi people worship the uh, darkness. Chathke, the gentle Hodazanate, in day is what we are told, which means that they made their prayer offerings to the darkness. And so it is that these kivas were used in many cases for those type of ceremonial purposes. <laughs> Anasazadane, <laughs> เอาไปตรงนี้นะตอนนี้อย่าตัดเนี่ยนี่ตอนนี้โอเคสร้างโอเคอย่าให้ที่คะแนนนี้เอ่อเป็นกระทําสเนี่ยเป็นเลยตั
would tell the stories about the Anasaza and how they put their slave labor uh, to use. How those huge logs and that that were transported from over 150 miles away uh, were brought to the uh, site there in construction of those uh, walls and that. And actually, the walls were there in many cases, people don't understand, is not to keep people out, but to keep people in. And it was that there were serious punishments for some of these slaves and that. They were mistreated and uh, subjected to torture and hunger and all kinds of ways and that to make them obedient. And so when you see some of these pottery, it's just that people look at the pottery and that. There are some pottery that is uh, more, looks more like a drinking glass, kind of a cylinder type of thing. There's a story behind that. And that was to say when the Anasaza were mocking the gods of the holy people or the holy people of the Dene, they said, we are more intelligent than your gods. We should be your gods. And they were bragging about the idea they could take the heart from a dog, one dog, and put it into another dog and uh, switch the hearts and both dogs could live. And so stories like that. And then after the Anasaza were completely destroyed, there's a story about how these people felt so much anger against the Anasaza that they took effort to shatter and break all of these uh, pottery in that. And there are just huge piles of pottery in that all over the place. And even to this day, when you go out there and you find great big mounds of broken pottery and that. So that is the, one of the parts of the story of the Dene. Is what they used to tell us. And there are so many stories about the evil ways of the Inasaza. And it is that uh, even when the holy people uh, were destroying the uh, Inasaza, they caused a big win and that, that they caused to uh, go over the uh, area and that to. Uh, destroy the crops and the people that they're held as slaves, they all ran off, they abandoned the Inasaza. And those people went and hid and joined other uh, groups of people away from the, the uh, Anasazi. And some of them hid in canyons and some of them went even down into the Grand Canyon. And after the Inasaza were no more, then they came back out and went back to the place where they were living during the time that the Anasaza were here. And those people afterwards, before the Anasaza, they were called Ayakini. After the Anasaza were destroyed, they are then called Kisani. Kisani means housekeepers, is that is the name, Kisani. Kinbandatasande, Binadketachadinde, is what our old people say about the uh, teachings about the Anasaza. The Anasaza were the people that were so very different from the Dene. There's a lot of stories and, and uh, that it, that have been shared with our families and that down through the years, but a lot of it is not being passed on. And so this area, all the way down from the bottom of this uh, canyon, is called Tekho. But the old people used to refer to it as Tekho Chagohaza, which is to say the place in the uh, the high rock areas, Tekho, is uh, then referred to as the place of crying, Chagohaza. And that's where the word Chago means the place of crying. And uh, our people had a name for this area. And it was a very evil place. After all of the people that had practiced slavery, and so were many other things that were so horrible that when the holy people finally destroyed them, they caused the rocks to cave in and they caused the big wind to dry up all of the wells and that that were in this area. And so Chagohaza is still considered a place of crying and dying. And so this is where we're at. Uh, many of these walls and that Every group that was captured from some area had their own way of building walls. But basically the uh, technique was similar. But you can see the different ways that the, uh, the design that was built into the walls. And that are kind of uh, many different examples that uh, 
the rock texture and design of this particular group is different than that group over there and it's even more different from the group that's further on over in that direction and then over here in this area as well. So the people that uh, built these walls were not one group of people from one place. There was a number of different groups that came from different areas and that to construct these walls. And they were probably uh, from one particular location and uh, they put the rock together and put built in the designs into the uh, different ways and patterns and that, that they used to construct the walls. And it's all evident in some of the ways that you, you can look at these walls today and actually see the difference. See, one of the obvious uh, difference in the way that the walls are constructed, some of them have the log poles to construct the floor come through the walls. And on some of the other ones, the poles don't come through the wall. They end inside of the, the wall. And those walls are somewhere around three feet thick. They have an inner face and an outer face. And in between, they are filled with rock and clay. Here's one type of design of a wall that you can see is, is very different, is that they have the uh, continuous row of thinner rock, not thick, but the rock that are thin, that are put into uh, the design. And so it is very different than some of the other walls that use the, uh, the larger uh, rocks to make the pattern in the wall. See, there you have the different a different pattern than that one over there. Now right here is very interesting in, in the wall and the pattern where there are large gaps. There are small flat pieces of, of, of rock. Now the way that some of the, the old people used to t talk about this is that small children or the elderly people would gather these uh, small pieces of flat rock and to haul them and carry them long distances to come here and fill the larger gap between these rocks when they were constructing these walls. Now that then when they talk about uh, when the holy people just determined that they had to destroy the uh, Anasaza is that they caused the rocks to cave in on some of these structures. So in some of these areas you see large pieces of boulder in that that crashed into these walls and actually fell onto the rock formations and that that were constructed in the area. And so it destroyed their dwellings and some of the things that they were using these dwellings for. See, now here's another sample of the type of wall that is so very different. It's a smaller flat pieces that were carried in from many miles away. Now, even these walls, they're different the way that they are built as they go come out of the, uh, the ground, as they start building higher and higher. It's not the same group of people building the, the walls. Now the uh, Deneh, when they talk about these, uh, what's called the Kivas, back in the, the time of the Anasaza, some of these places were actually altars that were made by the slaves and that that were actually places that they would do their human sacrifices. This was completely enclosed so it was completely dark telling about how they worship the darkness. But so the is what we are told which means that their prayers were offered to the uh, the darkness and so this is one of those places that uh, is uh, a location that would be probably a sacrificing altars and that that were located in some of the, uh, the kivas and that that were constructed. And those are the things that we are told. <laughs> Thank you.
Hey, thanks for watching our videos. If you like what you see, don't forget to uh, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss one of our uploads. Also, head over to our website, NavajoTraditionalTeachings.com. Sign up for our email list. Okay.